Hasidic Gems on Parshas Toldos. It says in the Posik, Vayisroitzetzu Habonim Bekirba. There was a struggle between the, the twins, Yaakov and Esav. Vayisroitzetzu Habonim Bekirba while they were in her, their mother's womb, in Rivka's womb. Um, that's the simple. The Hasidic Yetoyrelach are telling the Sorry. Rashi says, Rashi says, what is the meaning? Vayisroitzetzu uh, comes from the word of rots. They were running. Whenever Rivka walked by the base medrash of, of, of uh, Shem Ve'eva, Yeshiva of Shem Ve'eva, Yaakov rots and Mepharis lot says, Yaakov was rushing, he wanted to run out. He wanted to get out already. He wanted to get out to go to the yeshiva. That's what Rashi says. And the Hasidic question is, why does Yaakov want to run out to the yeshiva? He's sitting and learning with a malach, with an angel, uh, in the womb of his mother. Every person learns with a womb. We will, uh, learns with an angel in the womb of the mother. So why is he uh, running to, to go out? So there are three answers. One, the first is Horava Kodesh Rabbi Yitzchok Mivorka says, Yaakov was running to leave his mother's womb even though he was learning with a malach because he didn't want to have a neighbor like Esau. Harchek mi ro, you have to, you have to uh, stay away, stay away from a bad neighbor because a bad neighbor is only going to bring bad influences. So it's it's worth it to sacrifice learning with a malach, just not to be influenced from the um, from the evil of the neighbor of the neighbor. Another possibility is that Yaakov Ovinu was trying to run out, was pushing to run out when she walked, when, when, when Rivka, when Rivka uh, passed the Beis Medrash of Shem Ve'eva because he wanted to go out and help others. He wanted to go out and teach others. He wanted to go out to be Makar of others because that's our obligation in life. That's our duty. And he wanted to do that. Now, this past Shabbos, we had a, a guest, um, a lady, a woman who was an attorney from Manhattan. And she heard me say this, and she came and asked me a bombshell. She asked me a great question. She says, if, he, if the reason he wanted to leave was because he wanted to go out and, and be Makarov and help other people become more from, uh, her question is, she had Esav right there. She could, he could, Yaakov could have worked on Esav. So that can't be the reason. That can't be the reason. Then we had a third possibility, that the reason that he wanted to leave, Yaakov wanted to leave, was because he wanted to hurry in learning, which means he wanted to work it out himself. He, wanted to, to, he didn't want to be spoon-fed. He wanted to, to learn the right way, where you have to work it out yourself, and with amelus, with toil, and, and that's, the, that's the right way. And, that, and we should learn from here, we should learn from here that um, it's worth it to sacrifice being close, uh, even learning Torah with a malach, rather than to be a neighbor, have, have a, to be under the influence of a bad neighbor, to live near a bad neighbor. That's that's a that's a Musar Haskel we should apply to ourselves. That um, and we also should apply to ourselves the second thought that we said, even though this guest, this lady guest that we had, uh, asked a bombshell on it, but uh, it's also a truth truth that maybe he want maybe he wanted to uh, leave, uh, go away from a malach, even go away from a malach because he wanted to do for Yiddishkeit even though the question is very strong. And the third way is, was all, is also a truism that we have to try to work ourselves, not to, not to let ourselves be spoon-fed. 
Okay, the same Rashi says, um, new point, that uh, when when Rivki Menu walked by the base medrash of uh, Shem Ve'eva, Yaakov wanted to go out. Uh, when she was Iveres al Pischei Avodes Kechavim, Rashi says, when she passed by um, a church we, where they worship Avodes Zora, Esav was pushing to go out. Question, Hasidish question. Look, Yaakov couldn't get out because Esav was blocking him. Esav was, Esav was the Bechor. Esav was, in, was, was closer to the, to the outside. But who stopped Esav from going out? Why couldn't Esav just go out? <laughs> Why couldn't Esav go out? He was, there was nobody blocking him. Comes along Harava Kodesh Rabbi Cheskel Mikuzmir and says that Esav was so wicked, so wicked, he didn't want to go out because he, he, his, his, his main intention was to stop Yaakov from going out to learn Torah, to 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 to, 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 to stop Yaakov's going out to Torah. He was so wicked, he could have gone out. He sacrificed his own desires in order to stop Yaakov from going out. Okay, that's with that Rashi. Then we're going to continue. The Pasuk says that from the womb, from the womb they, was, they were different. Yaakov was the Tzaddik and Esav was the Russia. They were already separated from the womb. The truth is that me'ayich means from the intestines they were separated. So the Hasidic Torah are saying like this, and this is called the dietetic pshat, dietetic pshat, that from the intestines they were separated because if a person eats too much and drinks too much in his, and puts too much food into his intestines, Yiporedu, that will cause a pirud, that will cause him to separate, to not be close to Hashem. A person that eats and fills himself so much, in his, in, he fills his intestines, that person, that person uh, is sluggish and can't function properly when he eats so much. And that will cause Yiporedu, he will separate from HaKadosh Baruch The Pesach continues. Vayehav Yitzchak is Esav, as we were speaking about before. Yitzchak loved Esav. The Baal Shem Tev HaKadosh, Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tev explains, from that moment on, no person, even the greatest tzaddik in the world, can find any faults with his children. <laughs> can find faults with his children. Look at the great Yitzchak, who was, who who loved, who loved, who loved Esav. From that moment on. Okay, we're going to continue. Halitani, he came in. Esav came in exhausted from the fields. Halitani, no, and and Yaakov was cooking a cholent. And Esav says, Halitani, no, min ha'odim ha'odim hazeh. Give me to eat from that red stuff. Question. Red stuff? What does an Esav say? Give me to eat from that chalant. Why is he calling it red stuff? Comes along a Rav Kodesh and says that Esav was only interested in externals. The red stuff. He wasn't so interested in the tovech in the in the in the, the chant itself as much as he was in the red in the red color of the chant. Okay, we shall continue further. So he says, Give me to eat from this red stuff. Ki oyev onochi. 
because I am tired. That's the simple. The Hasidish Torah are telling us what does Onochi mean? Ki oye for Onochi. Onochi means the Aseris Hadibris, the Ten Commandments that say Onochi Hashem Lekecha. Ki oye when it comes to learning Torah or doing mitzvahs, the person gets tired. <laughs> it means no, the desire is lacking. So we have to see that this doesn't happen to us. When we are tired, um, uh, we, we, when it comes to Torah, we shouldn't be tired. We should know that that's our obligation on life, and that's what we should see to get ourselves to do. Okay, one more. So the Torah continues in Parshas Toldos about about Avimelech came and wanted to uh, make a pact with um, with Yitzchak Avinu, and the pasuk says Yitzchak Avinu says to Avimelech, he says, "What do you want? What are you coming to me for? You hate me. You hate me." Kisenesim, I see the pasuk says. He says, no, roi roinu, we saw, we see, twice, twice seeing. Ki hoyu Hashem imach, that God is with you. What's the twice? So Rashi says, one, we see that God was with your father, roi, and we see that God is with you. That's the simple. The chasidish etoyre lachorava kodesh, reb menachem endel mivorka, says a really deep, important Musa, Musa from a chosid. Musa from a chosid. He's saying, Roy, Roinu, he says, you do everything. Avimelech says to Yitzhak, you do everything. We're, we're, we're discovering that what you do, your greatness, is something you try to hide. Bahatsnei Aleches. And in order to see your greatness, we have to look twice. And that's a big Musar Haskel that we should learn that whatever we do, we have to learn from Yitzchok Avinu that whatever he did was Bahatznei Aleches. No advertisement. Ein brocha shruya, ela bedavra somim in ayin. There's more brocha when it's hidden, and, and if it's hidden, you're not doing it for yourself to gain anything from it. You're doing it straight for the Rebbe Shalom. We should be zeicha to this. Amen v'yamein. Okay, a sikum of the Hashkofa Satayra that we could learn from the Hasidic gems. We learned, we learned that um, um, we learned some Hashkofa Satayra that stay away. Harchek Mishach in Ra, we saw it, we saw it depicted clearly in the Rashi. Stay away, stay away from bad neighbors. They'll only influ influence you to do wrong things. Even if you're going to lose out in Torah, you have to stay away from them. We learned also that the obligation of every single Jew is to go and go out and be makar of people to Yiddishkeit. We have to learn, and we have to go out and do and teach and try our best to bring more people to Yiddishkeit. And the third Hatshkofer we learned was um, that um, it's very nice to be spoon-fed and to have a great, great Rebbe, but we have to uh, try to do it on our own, to her, because then we have a Kenyan, we have acquisition of it. We have a Kenyan on it. If somebody just spoon-feeds us, it doesn't get the full depth of it. The next thing we learned, Hashkofa wise, was um, that Esav, the, 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 the Russia, will do anything to stop the Ben Torah from, 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 from learning Torah. 
to Russia, will do anything. He'll sacrifice his own wants and desires. Esav could have gotten out of the womb before Yitzchak, before, before Yaakov. He only stayed there to block, to block um, Yaakov Avinu. So the, the Hashkov is that no matter a uh, Russia, be careful for him from a Russia. He'll do anything and sacrifice his own desires and wants just to stop you from learning Torah when doing mitzvahs. We also learned that overeating, overeating, filling your intestines will only take us away from being able to serve Hashem. We will not be able to function um, properly, we will be sluggish, we will not, it's, it's not, besides the fact that it's unhealthy, but it will separate us from being an Oivar Hashem. Yiporedu, from the intestines, Yiporedu, we will, we will separate ourselves from Hashem. We also learned that even a tzaddik gomer, even a tzaddik can see evil cannot see any evil in his son who's doing, who's doing things wrong. A son is, a son is, his, his son is evil, but he can't see it. Even at Tzaddik. And that's what we spoke about before, too. Um, we learned that, that Esau was very interested only in the externals. He wasn't interested in the internals, in the content, just on the external, everything, that's the only thing that interested him. And we should learn the opposite. The main thing is not the externals, the main turn thing is the internal. We also learned that a person should guard himself. A person should guard himself because when it comes to learning Torah and doing mitzvahs, you know, every person has a genius within, within him. As a Yetzirah, that's a genius. He'll figure out all kind of things why I don't have to meet my obligations to Hashem. I, I'm too tired to learn, I'm too, too, too uh, I'm so exhausted to this, that. But when it comes to Torah and mitzvahs, we have to overcome all this genius of the Eight Sahara and not let him deceive us. We also learned that the proper way to serve Hashem is not to advertise and not to show off and not to do things so uh, for other people to hear, to see, oh, look how from this person is. No, it's between me and Hashem. We have to do things because that's what Hashem wants. Don't be a Balgaiva, don't be arrogant, and don't show how from you are. Hide. You're from Kite. Hide your from Kite. It's between you, Hashem. We should be zechat to all these things. Amen, Amen.